Hello, my name is Anjani, and today I'm reading the astrology report for the upcoming Mercury retrograde cycle. So Mercury goes retrograde on April 9th at the exact time for San Diego, where I live, is 5.14 p.m. So that's, you know, when Mercury goes retrograde, first of all, it's not actually going backwards. I made a video about this, and I'll, I'll attach a link to that here. Um, but it really is a time of, you know, we're so used to being in the linear kind of mind of, you know, I woke up in the morning, I got to do this, this, and this, I'm going to work. It's like very linear, you know, from point A to B to C. And during Mercury retrograde, it sort of brings us into a more feminine, uh, chaotic, flowy mind. And when I say chaotic, I don't mean um, chaos like, you know, bad. But I do mean that it's more undefined. It's more random and anything can happen. And a lot of times what we notice in Mercury retrograde is that um, systems set in place from a linear time frame mind unit don't work because this is a time of um, going the other way. So what we look at right now for the Mercury retrograde starting point is where is Mercury? What is Mercury saying in the beginning of this cycle? So Mercury's here in the sign of Taurus and uh, you can see that there is an easy flow of energy from Jupiter to Mercury. So just starting off with that little bit of information, the thing that really stands out to me is, um, so Jupiter expands and blows up anything that it touches, and when there's a trine, it's an easy flow of energy between two things. So in alchemy, this would be something that... Um, uh, goes together, you know, it's like mixing oil with oil. It's just makes it better Bigger I shouldn't say better. It just increases it so um, the, And so mercury in the sign of Taurus is a very pleasure uh, You know getting the most amount of uh, beauty and pleasure from our experience with the way that we perceive. Mercury is showing us about our perception, the way that we run things through our system and communicate them. So bringing them, uh, bringing in information and putting information back out. That's what we can get from looking at Mercury. So Mercury starting off in Taurus is really telling me that finding ways to communicate ideas and information that brings pleasure, increases beauty. If you're an artist, I mean, I think we all are artists in some way. We all have an artist part of us in our psyche, in our body. Um, I made a video about that too. I'll just apply a link uh, about that, um, the artist video that I made. So, during this cycle, the beginning of the cycle, I would say definitely tap into that for yourself. You know, how to, how can you increase your pleasure and express that? Um, because Mercury is all about communication. Taurus is all about pleasure and beauty, uh, abundance, everything that gives us more pleasure and beauty in our body, in our experience of being embodied. So that's the start of the Mercury retrograde cycle. There's a few things I'm gonna point out because I have the, the start of the cycle here and then I have the end of the cycle. So what I was kind of picking up on is that there's a beginning and there's an end and everything that happens in between is sort of you know, um, bringing, adding a new flavor to our life, a new dimension to our life. So let's look with Venus here. Venus starts off right next to Chiron within one degree. They're right next to each other. This in alchemy 
uh, because these two things are not totally different, but they're different. And when they're right next to each other like this, it means that their forms will change. So Chiron, I relate to Chiron as an alchemist. It's uh, traditionally known as a wounded healer, but I find that whole terminology to be kind of disempowering. And there's a way to look at it from that perspective. Okay, these are my wounds. I like to look at, you know, this is where, you know, when I get cut, I build scar tissue and it's like, I remember the wound, but it's stronger now. You know what I mean? That piece of me is, um, it feels more firm and, and I remember that. I remember when that happened and what I had to go through and it sort of increases my character. So Chiron with Venus, we can think about it like that. Like what are the wounds? What are the gifts that the feminine beauty, grace, you know, Venus is representing uh, its similar energy of Taurus. So this conjunction of Chiron and Venus are in opposition to the moon. So this is basically telling me that there is a component that has to do with the mother, the uh, feminine energy, and the wounding. So instantly my mind goes toward um, in our uh, world, really. It's not just pinpointed at any one place in the world. Um, the feminine energy has been really disempowered. Um, you know, not just talking about women, that is the most gross manifestation of it, but what women represent is what's more interesting to me. Um, the psychic intuitive abilities, the magical, witchy, creative, uh, not saying that just women have those things, but those things in general. So the video I did, it was last year, I think around this time called, why is the artist starving? Something like that. That's exactly what I was talking about. The art and beauty and pleasure are all things that we don't really, we have to find out about them and, and get them ourselves. And very few people had an upbringing where their parents were like, Oh, be an artist and let's explore your, let's explore your inner artist. You know, do you want to play music? Do you want to, it's not very common. You know, the most things that we hear is like, let's get you into law school and, you know, be a doctor. And, and those things are great too. Um, but those feminine qualities are equally awesome. And we haven't really fully matured and developed in those areas. i uh, just thinking of a, a client that I worked with recently that that was sort of the overall sort of thing we we're working with in her body, which was there is this inner artist that wants to receive. So when you're in the, in the place of being comfortable in the lap of luxury, you know, soaking in your hot, Epsom salt bath or sitting down by the ocean reading a book, you're fully open. Your muscles are relaxed. The tension has gone out of your body. And from this place, the most beautiful art can be created. And we don't go into that. Taurus, which is where the, the Mercury retrograde starts, we're not, uh, because it's better to give than to receive, has been something that has been told to us over and over and over. But here's a time for us to learn that it's sometimes it's better to receive than to give. It's, an, it's actually not better or worse anytime. But if I'm somebody who likes to give, and I am, I give something and if it's not received well, say I give you a piece of jewelry that I made, which it's got value. It's, you know, rubies and sapphire and all these expensive gemstones. And I give it to you from my heart and you say, oh no, I can't, I can't accept that. Then my sort of good feeling of being able to give something has been rejected and denied. And, you know, now you didn't get something and I didn't get to give you something. So it's not always better 
to give than to receive. You know, it's better to be open. <laughs> so um, that's something that I'm seeing really for this Mercury retrograde as a starting off place is how can we release tension in our body, relax, enjoy the beauty, go see a show that you like, listen to music and tap into your inner artist. So this is the start of Mercury Retrograde, and there's a million things I can say, but I'm going to leave that there and move on to the end of the retrograde cycle. So what happens here is that uh, Venus and Chiron are still together, and they're still square to Saturn. I forgot to mention that. They start off in this same sort of configuration, a little bit different. Uh, because they've moved a little bit further apart here, but they're still square to Saturn, which is telling us that from this place of looking at the wounds, tapping into your inner artist, um, being able to go there, you know, get intimate with yourself, with your physical body, with your psyche, um, get in there, you know, talk to yourself. I saw something today, it said, talk to your DNA. It's something that I do, maybe not DNA, but um, going into different parts of my body and like mentally having a conversation with them, you will find out the most amazing things about yourself. So this is really a time to do that. Uh, so there is that. At the end of the cycle, these two are still together. And the other thing, well, first, obvious, we have this humongous grand fire trine ending the Mercury retrograde cycle, which instantly I'm like, okay, this cycle is going to bring massive transformation to us collectively. And the other thing is that now Mars is trying Jupiter. So this is another place where uh, we can see that Mars is, the masculine is playing a big part in this Mercury retrograde cycle as a helper, as a, um, a way of setting a structure and a form. So the feminine energy is going through this whole thing of transformation, tapping into itself, getting intimate with its own being. And then the, the masculine is sort of setting the platform for that and being supportive in that way and showing up in a, in a big way. And of course, these things are gonna be unique and different for everybody. Uh, this is only uh, a collective reading. So now we have Mercury ending in the sign of Aries, and Mercury is going to be right next to Uranus when it uh, when the cycle is finished. So this, um, first of all, Aries is a warrior energy. It has a very fiery and protective type of quality. Uranus is a change agent. So the way this is showing up for me is Mercury, so the way we communicate is going to be, um, and I'm mysterious, but it's going to have a, an element of, of change. I mean, everything about the ending of this cycle says transformation because we have the grand fire trine. Mercury is right here with Uranus in the sign of Aries, which gives it a fierce sort of um, change quality to it. So unexpected change that's going to be fierce, not mean. Aries sometimes can be considered mean because it's sharp and direct. And it doesn't have to ask for um, acceptance or doesn't have to give an apology. It is just very direct. So that is a brief look at this upcoming Mercury retrograde cycle. I wish you the most amazing time during your experience with Mercury retrograde. I love these cycles. Thank you so much. Please leave any comments, um, ask any questions. And also there's a few videos that I'll share if you leave a comment that you want it. One of them is, um, the Mysteries of Chiron, where I, I think it's like a good chunk, a 30 minute video going through the chart, talking about Chiron in each one of the house positions. And then um, I'll add the videos that I mentioned in the little comment section of this reading. 
So thank you very much, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.